The focus verse for our lesson today is from uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the uh, blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. And it says, the truth about God, God can provide victory through unconventional means. And what we need to take from this lesson is, I will follow God and trust him and trust him and trust him and trust him for victory. Oh, there's victory in Jesus. Uh, Elder, District Elder Sumners has our lesson for us at this time. Amen and praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Uh, quarterly theme's been talking about victory. Victory. Victory in God. Victory in Jesus. Amen. And we've been studying about the history here of Israel uh, having been delivered from the bondage of Egypt and brought out miraculously uh, by the hand of the Lord, the leadership of Moses brought us brought them out of Egypt and following the uh, the command of God, uh, bringing them out, bringing them through the Red Sea, and taking them to the wilderness, um, and being in the wilderness, as we've been learning about how all of that came about. And it's amazing that when you think about that when they left Egypt, they could have been in the promised land in a very relatively short time. I mean, there's different opinions, but all of them, somewhere around 30 days, uh, of course, of when they actually left uh, the Red Sea, and, and, and yet it took them 40 years. It took them 40 years of wandering around in the wilderness, being, of course, tested of God, and uh, the different experiences that we see through the leadership of Moses for that 40-year period. And when they finally come to Jericho, uh, we've, we learned, we've learned that by this time, uh, after 40 years in the wilderness, that generation that left Egypt uh, was all gone now, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb. And they'd all died in the wilderness. And a new generation by now has risen up, a generation that when we get to our uh, lesson today in Jericho, uh, by the time they get here to Jericho, all of these, all of this generation had suffered death. And uh, this is what God told them. Uh, God is a truthful God. Amen. He tells the truth. And so, uh, however, we see still yet, we see the, the love and the mercy of God. And uh, that he would, with patience, uh, show us the way. And uh, we, we see that finally the day would come. Moses finally passes away. And... He never got opportunity to go over into Canaan. The closest he got was God took him up on a high mountain and allowed him to see. And uh, Moses was shown many things by God. And this wasn't the first time that he was up in the mountains uh, talking with God. And God showing him, uh, as we understand, God at, at that 
time with the uh, having been coming out of Egypt, God at one point showed him all of the, his glory uh, in, the, in the passage of time. And even to our day, Moses was able to see our time. And so, uh, so Moses had, certainly knew what was ahead for Israel. But, of course, as we remember studying that, Moses himself was not allowed to go on over into the land of Canaan uh, because of uh, some mistakes that he made. God, upon that, it, it, and it's, don't get, don't get the scripture wrong. It's, I believe Moses is saved because the scriptures declare him, uh, Jesus speaks of him, the scripture speaks of him, that he's going to be uh, around for eternity. So, but he did have to pay the cost. You, it, you, there's always a price to pay when you commit sin. Sin comes with consequences. And sin has to be dealt with. Sin has to be taken care of. Sin has to be cleansed. And so all this was done, of course. Uh, I believe that Moses, of course, is going to be one of those eternal figures that someday you will meet. Uh, Amen. Hopefully you will meet. Uh, Amen. Because you have to uh, walk the walk, talk the talk, and uh, be faithful to God. And on, on resurrection day, Amen. On res- the, the first resurrection day. That's what. That's the one we're looking for. You know, we know there's two uh, days of, res- of, of resurrection: the first and the second. And uh, we're 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 shooting for the first. Yeah, we're shooting for the first when the church is raptured out, and and we will be with the Lord Jesus for all eternity. A- amen. But uh, let me get back to Jericho here. Uh, the day would come, of course, after the end, after the death of Moses. This close out that 40 year period of time that he led Israel in the wilderness. And, uh, now Moses is passed and the, uh, the mantle is passed on to Joshua. If you remember, Moses sought the Lord and, uh, to give Israel, uh, a new leader, and this was carried out and done uh, by uh, passing this mantle on to Joshua. Joshua was no stranger, uh, and he he was not in the, the generation of Moses. He's the generation following Moses. But while he while the forty years was going on, what we know about Joshua is. Um, he was active in uh, serving the Lord, serving Moses through that 40 years. So he, he, he himself, uh, like Moses was on the backside of the desert for 40 years, Joshua served the Lord and served Moses for, for that 40 years of time that they spent in the wilderness. So he was no stranger to God. He certainly was no stranger to uh, uh, God's plan and and the way God instructed Israel through Moses and 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 and, and Joshua was given that honor and uh, to continue on where Moses left off Joshua picks up and so uh, but to get to the promised land they had to cross the Jordan the Jordan River. And, of course, we remember uh, last week or two we studied here um, crossing the Jordan River. And, and of course, that, what, a, what a, a feat that was. And while uh, many of the uh, people that were crossing over Jordan at, at, at that time uh, heard, at least heard reports of God delivering them out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea. But most of them, or not 
almost all of them, they didn't, they weren't eyewitness to it. They were wandering around for 40 years in the wilderness. And so uh, many, many of those, not all of those, of course, of that generation passed away. And so we're seeing a new day. We're seeing uh, actually uh, a newer uh, congregation, the congregation that Moses come out of Egypt with. We have a completely uh, uh, a flip over, I guess, to where it changed from one generation to, a, to the next generation, uh, which would be, of course, generation that Joshua uh, would lead over the Jordan River at the word of God. God gave uh, Joshua instruction as he did with Moses because uh, Joshua was, if you remember uh, <clears throat> what was spoken there of the transition here of leadership, that uh, Joshua, of course, would have been anointed, prayed for, and and and, he, and as they said, some of Moses' glory and would be on him. And so all said and done, now that Moses has died and gone, Joshua is the leader. Is the, as Moses was, Joshua is now. And so God gave him instruction at this time that now God was going to allow uh, Israel to cross over the Jordan River, which would bring them into the promised land. And so uh, they they come across in a miraculous way, such as when Moses brought them out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea. Now Joshua is bringing them over the Jordan River, which was no small task. It was at the time of the wheat harvest and and uh, the time of the harvest, of, and so the uh, the Jordan River was overflowing its banks. It was. A, flood stage, and, and God nevertheless commanded Joshua and what to do, and so uh, the, the commandment was given to the priest uh, that they were to lead God's people over the Jordan. And as we know the story, uh, as the priest came uh, along with the Ark the co- of the Covenant, And as the priest walked into the flooded Jordan, uh, the waters parted from their feet. And each step they took was on dry ground, even in the riverbed, which was overflowing its banks with water. Yet, as the waters parted and went downstream, and it created a wall of water on one side, and, 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 and water went on downstream. But God dried up the riverbed so they wasn't getting stuck in the mud. But they walked across. Now, this is something that this generation, this is their experience. This, they've been hearing about their father's experience coming out of Egypt. For 40 years. Now, this is their time. This is their experience. And they were the, the generation that actually was going to be, uh, be allowed to come into the promised land. And so, what they did when they got over the Jordan on dry ground, God had given them, of course, the uh, Passover instructions while they were in the wilderness. And so this is one of the first things they do is set up after crossing over is set up uh, and and worship God and give God praise and worship. And it was that time of the year which, of course, they would be the beginning of the new day of which they would observe the, the Passover in the promised land. Amen. And so this was one of the first things they did because of the time and the time. And God is always on time. Amen. Isn't it amazing 
And sometimes we think he's running late. He's not running late. He's always on time. Amen. And so at the time that God determined, uh, then he, he brought them across in this miraculous fashion. And they set up the, the form of worship and, they, and, the, and the Passover uh, that was given to their fathers in the, in the, in the wilderness with the uh, slaying of the sacrificial lamb and, and uh, of course, carrying out the, uh, the supper itself and all that involved, all of that. They were able now for the first time in the promised land to observe this great feast, amen, for Israel. And so that's, they, so they get things right because this is the leading of the Lord and they, they, they keep the Passover and then having crossed over, uh, their first city that they come to is Jericho. And, uh, so they, when, when they, when they enter into, uh, to Jericho or up to Jericho, uh, they see a walled city, uh, a great city with a wall built around it. And of course, back in those days, times, it was uh, uh, a normal thing to see in, 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 in cities such as this and areas such as this that for the purpose of defense, they would, would build a wall around, we, around the, the where they lived, the city itself would have a wall completely around, and it would be there to help protect them from evasion and people coming and attacking them and taking over their city. So this is something that uh, uh, they they face. The Israelites would face, but remember now, God had promised them through Moses and now through Joshua. That when it comes to the promised land, this was going to be given to them. God was going to give them this land. This is something that they could trust in and hope in and believe in. And of course, we went through the, uh, there where they give the, uh, the spy out the land back in their father's day. You remember this was 40 years prior when God told them to go over and spy out the land. Remember us studying that? And, and so this they did, but out of, out of the 12 spies, uh, two of them had a good report. Ten of them had a bad report. We, you know, because they were negative to the, and, and saying, well, yeah, it's everything you said it was. Whatever God promised us, we, we, we see it. The land is a land of plenty. There's plenty of plenty of uh, uh, of food. There's plenty of uh, places to live. We, I mean, we're not even going to have to build no houses. They're already built for us. They had all of this, amen. And yet their 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 forefathers failed God because they begin they allowed uh, doubt and and so rather than they to be able to go over. In the days of Moses, God rejected their entering into the promised land at that time, and they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. But now here in this generation, they've crossed the Jordan, and something that their fathers couldn't do. And now they face their first obstacle after getting across the Jordan. And, of course, God miraculously brought them across Jordan. But having gotten over into the promised land, their first uh, obstacle here was Jericho. And an obstacle it was because they were it was a well-built city, a well-built protection device, such as the walls. Amen. Now, we're hearing a lot about walls in this day and age, aren't we? Uh, and you would think... They, they would, walls would be kind of obsolete by now, and and um, pretty much they are. But uh, uh, they still show, even in this day and age that we live in, they still show there is 
there is some protection or there is something uh, that, that in the sense of a wall that can be constructed that will at least hinder uh, people from coming on in uh, to the country. Of course, by now we ain't going to spend all of our day discussing all that, uh, but I'm just making the point that uh, as, as the walls was an obstacle back there for Israel and, and being able to uh, get and do what they want, uh, we see in, even in this day and age, that was thousands of years ago, and yet even in this day, we're still talking about uh, walls. And, and, and even in our generation, we've heard both good and bad. Uh, we've seen both good and bad, uh, such as the Berlin Wall and, and, and those things that, that was constructed for many years and divided a, a whole country and people for years and years. And, and so, uh, this is, we, we understand a little bit about, uh, what they faced and what they were coming up against. And so, uh, when they come up the, to the land, as God promised them, He would fight their battles. He would, uh, make the way for them. He would get, this is the, His gift to, to Israel and, and yet when they come up, they, their first obstacle here is they're up against a wall city. And, of course, as we can see in the, in the story of all of this, uh, the people that were behind the walls that lived in the city uh, was trusting that, as they had been for who knows how long, uh, that these walls had protected them from invasion. They were still there and alive and uh, able to carry out their everyday lives because of the protection of this wall. And so uh, rather than uh, uh, take counsel with Israel and, and, and yield and surrender, because I believe they were given an opportunity to surrender, uh, they said, no, we're not going to, uh, surrender. We're not going to, we, we, we are protected here. We have protected ourselves by building of these walls. And then we, our confidence, our trust is in the fact that if you try to invade us, you're going to fail because we believe that these walls are going to keep us. Amen. Little did they know at that point in time that what God was going to do. But they put their trust in man. They put their trust in what they could do. And uh, they ignored the, uh, of course, the no doubt, uh, those who were able to speak to them in the, in the sense of leadership, uh, they, they, they were not going to listen to Israel. They were not going to give up to Israel. But yet God said he would deliver them. Talking to Israel now. And so it didn't matter what they were saying, what they were going to do. And they failed to acknowledge the God of Israel. Amen. And God was going to work a work. Amen. And that would indeed be in the favor of Israel. And so um, they come to Jericho and they see this obstacle here, but God speaks to Joshua. Amen. Let him know. Not only does he speak to him, but he actually appears to Joshua. And he appears to Joshua as an angel of the Lord, and his appearance was as a great warrior. And so uh, he then speaks with Joshua and instructs him what he needs to do, what God said you need to do, and that God will then deliver Jericho into their hands. And so uh, we, we see the greatness of God once again. We see how God is able to deliver his people. 
no matter what the obstacle is. And since leaving, leaving Egypt uh, and, until now, certainly they have the uh, testimonies. They have uh, the record of what God can and will do if you believe him, if you trust him. Amen. That no matter what it could be, if God is uh, instructing you on what to do and you do it, you shall, you'll never fail. Amen. But you've got to trust in God. And so uh, these people, of course, the inhabitants here of Jericho, were putting their trust because they didn't have the God of Israel on their side. And so they didn't have anything else really to trust in. Not only that, it had served them well, apparently, up till now. And they were a thriving people. And they were a protected people of their own. But the day has now come when God said, this is going to be yours. But you had to obey the instructions of God. And so we learn by these experiences that we need to get our instruction from the Lord. Amen. We're facing things today. Our country is facing things today. Even from within our country, we got such turmoil and, and, and that's going on. Amen. And, and of course, we know what the answer is. We need to be listening to what God has to say. We need to go before the Lord and seek God. Well, God has instructed us. The church, amen, that Jesus built, amen, will stand against all that opposes us. Yes, but that doesn't mean he's, we're not going to get opposition. We certainly are. And it's going to be even increase the more as to what we have today. Amen. But yet we need to trust God. Amen. We need to trust God. Because God made promise to us. God made promise to us that upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's a promise from God. And so even though we see things that we don't know what we're going to do with this, you know, uh, and, you know, it looks as though in some areas we've lost the fight, amen, because the enemy has overwhelmed us, amen. Now, when I say us, I'm talking about mankind here, amen. Uh, the church is not going to be overwhelmed. Amen? Stay in the church because that is your safe place. Amen? Because you have the promise from Jesus himself that I'm going to build you a place. I'm going to build you a place. Amen? And the enemy is not going to conquer you. The enemy is not going to overwhelm you. But you know what you've got to do? You've got to be obedient to my instruction. And you've got to trust in my word and hold fast, amen, to your faith. Amen, and then everything is going to work out. Everything is going to be all right for you because you're in the church. Our safe haven is the church. Amen. Because that's what God has given us. That's what God has built for us. That's what God has constructed for us. So yes, their enemy is going to be there. Opposition is going to rise up. We're in the church. Amen. But the church is still yet in this world. And so long as we're in this world, the church will be attacked. Amen? But we got to trust God. And so 
Israel here in this situation, they could not again fall back into the sins of their fathers and become disobedient and doubtful and, and, and behave like as if, like their fathers did. You brought us out here in the wilderness to die. Wouldn't it have been better if we'd have stayed in Egypt? Or should, wouldn't it be better if we go back to Egypt? That was what they concluded. That's what they came to the decision of. Amen. So this is what got them in defeat in the wilderness. Amen. But this generation now, we have, amen, they have an advantage here. And in that, they again see the hand of God. God has brought them out miraculously. And what we see here, what would transpire here, uh, unlike their fathers did with the wilderness, they trusted God. They, at this point here with Jericho, when they, when they come up against Jericho, they seen that, how are we going to overcome that? Amen. But Joshua rose up as the leader and said, this is what God said. This is what we're going to do because this is what God said. Amen. And as silly as it may sound, this is what God said do. Amen. Because somebody might come up with the thought, well, what good's it going to do to go and march around the city? Amen. God gave them certain instructions. And, and so what somebody might say, what good is that going to do? But they didn't argue. They did it. Amen. They were, they were believers at this point. Having just come across the River Jordan in a miraculous fashion and now being encouraged and assured by the leadership of Joshua. Amen. They... They were on fire for God at this time. Amen. And they trusted in the word of God. They trusted in the um, direction of God. And they, and so uh, God, of course, give them direction and, and instruction here as Joshua relays this to them. And so in our text here, it says, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. God told them to surround the city. Now, I think if, if I understood some of the comments I've read from a source, another source here, that the Jordan River was about, depending on where they actually crossed the Jordan River, it could have been as little as two miles or as much as five miles from Jericho to the river. That's a relatively short space. That wouldn't take them 40 years to, to, to get to uh, Jericho. But uh, uh, anyways, um, got, they were instructed by Joshua what to do. And so this is what we don't have time to go into all that detail, but uh, following what this, the text here says, Jericho was straightly shut up, meaning uh, they were surrounded by by God. God told them how to do it, and they, they surrounded the walls of Jericho uh, around those walls, and so that nobody could get in and nobody could get out at this point. And so uh, it said, because the children of Israel, none went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Simple, simple manner of, of uh, what, what, how are we going to do this? And God said, well, we're going to surround the city. And we're going to take control of what comes in and what goes out. 
Amen. Now, this would nullify, eventually, certainly, this would nullify the protection of the walls because eventually they're going to have to get out. Amen. Eventually the supplies was going to run out, whether it be food or whether it be ammo or whether, whatever, regardless of what it was. Uh, and a simple in a simple military procedure here, simple as, you know, when you get to looking at it, God already gave them victory here. Amen. I have given you, I have given you, he says, uh, into the hand of Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. You, you've got them surrounded. You've got them trapped. They thought they were, they put all their confidence and stuff in this wall. And God, just a simple measure here, uh, God is a wonder. Amen. God is a wonder. He said, and you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt should thou do six days. Now, again, in, 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 in some of our mind, people's minds, uh, thinking logically, how is that going to do anything? But hold on. And seven priests shall bear before the ark, which is the covenant, ark of the covenant, seven trumpets, ram horns, and seven, on the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and a priest shall blow the trumpets. And this is what the plan was. God has a plan, and it may not make any sense. Certainly, it's it's good that the enemy was puzzled, no doubt. What are they doing? What are they doing? Amen. And it shall come to pass when the, they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, this was God's instructing. It would have been a foolish thing, which they didn't, but it would have been a foolish thing had they behaved like their fathers did in the wilderness and begin to murmur and doubt like they did in the wilderness. No, Joshua was a good leader. Joshua was convincing in his uh, leading the people. He, he let them know what to do. And so they, they carried this out. Oh, what God will do, what God can do, and what God will do if he can get somebody to trust him. If he can get somebody. As somebody say, can I get a witness? Amen. God is looking for a witness here. And, of course, they're going to witness by the fact that they're going to be obedient to God's instruction. Now, now common sense or sometimes, you know, it, it, it didn't make much sense. Simple logic here. What is that going to do? What? How is that going to give us the victory? How are we going to win the city by marching around it? Amen. Because at this point, there's no plan in the offensive means of attacking this city. There's nothing said in God's plan here that you're going to wait till dark and attack or anything like that. You're just going to march around the build, around the, the city. You know, how's that going to do anything? But they remained faithful, and Joshua, the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we, we could dwell on a lot of these points here. Uh, there's a lot here in these verses that we're not going to be able to cover, but we can see the importance that God places upon the covenant that he gave to Israel. The Ark of the Covenant was most precious uh, from the time that it was given uh, back in the days of Moses throughout the remainder of the wilderness and now going on over into Jericho 
this, this is still a very important uh, part of uh, God's relationship, uh, God's covenant. And he said, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets, the ram's horns before the ark of the, of the Lord. And he said unto the people, pass on and can pass the city. And let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And this is just setting things in order. And it had certainly had its effect that God was looking for. Uh, the military folks went fr- out front. And, and they were there for, if needed, for protection, for defense mechanism in case uh, the, the inhabitants of Jericho would come up with some kind of uh, plan to uh, take them out. They, the, God had this set in order. And, and no doubt the way it was all carried out, it, it, it caused no doubt even fear in the hearts of the Jericho inhabitants. What did they do? They didn't, for one thing, they didn't know what their plan was. They didn't know what they were going to do or how they were going to do it, but they're definitely going to do something. Amen. And so, and he said to the people, pass on and come past the city. And they did that. And let him that his arm pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the rams passed on before the, the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Of course, this was carried on the shoulders of the priest. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets. They went first. And the re-reward, or, the, or the, there was those, of course, you had your front line. And you had the priest with the covenant. And then following them, you had the rear line, which is military again. And he said, and after they came to the ark, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. Now you remember the story. The first six days, you to do you you to go around in this fashion, go around the walls of Jericho one time for six days, and then on the seventh day, you to go again around the city, but this time you go seven times around the city. And then God gave them an instruction that what to do as far as once you did it on the seventh time, then the, the priests were to blow the trumpets. And so up to that time, there would be no talking, no noise, just walking around. But on that seventh, we wait to hear the trumpet of the Lord. We're waiting to hear that trumpet. Amen. We sing about it. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. Amen. We, there's a lot of testimony and we're waiting for the trumpet. God said it, there would be a trumpet sound. And so we're waiting to hear that trumpet of the Lord. And the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. Amen. We'll be caught up, you see, to meet him in the air. And so they were to do this. And then on that seventh day and on that seventh trip around the walls of Jericho, the priests were to blow the trumpet. And when the the priest, the priest blow the trumpet, all of Israel was to shout. Amen. Along with the blowing of the trumpets. And the walls of Jericho will fall down. Simple, isn't it? Uh, quite a thing, though. Amen. And they did that. And they got the result that God said you will get. And the walls of the city that protected the inhabitants of Jericho were taken out of the of the uh, I can't remember the word now 
equation. They were, they were, they were, it was, they had no protection. They were defeated. Can you imagine all this great city and the walls just fell flat? Which they had no, the invading military that, uh, Israel did have was commanded then to go in. And they went in and slew the inhabitants of Jericho. Even with the exception of Rahab, the harlot. Remember that story. Uh, the two spies that were sent over into, uh, sent into Jericho, um, to bring back a report of what was, uh, what, what, what they had, what, what they were going to be up against once they entered into Jericho. They come back and, of course, Rahab is the one to give them, uh, a, uh, a safe out. And then allow them to go down by the wall and, they were uh, they were spared from being found out, and and so when it came time then for this to take place, they, uh, uh, Joshua gave instruction: you're to kill everybody, men, women, children. I know it sounds kind of kind of tough, but this is what this is what the Lord told them to do. And everything had to die. Everything had to be eradicated. Amen. And so, uh, but you're to spare Rahab and her family and all with her. Um, and so they, that's what happened. When the city fell down and they went in, invaded the city and, and carried out all of that, uh, Rahab and her people were brought up and they were allowed to continue to live and to get, uh, go on with life because of their uh, doing what they did. Amen. They were rewarded. Well, we've always said this. It's a good thing to be good to Israel. Now, of course, I know Israel is not where they ought to be. They rejected the Savior. They rejected the Messiah. And... Uh, They've paid for it, and they're going to continue to pay for it. Uh, But where should we stand? I always said this, Israel's in God's hands. And while I don't uh, uh, promote or follow the, to this day as a nation, to this day they haven't received and accepted Jesus as their Messiah. That's their mistake. Amen. But nevertheless, they're still God's chosen people and that's where I say hands off you preach the truth you live the truth you testify to the truth I've met with rabbis and talked with them and 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 you know I, I've certainly I think it's helped me in trying to understand uh, somewhat about how uh, Israel believes and, and and so forth but uh I don't pat him on the back for rejecting the Messiah. Amen. I, I, what conversations have I had with them? Uh, they, of course, let me know where they stand, and and before I leave, they know where I stand. And so, but uh, God is going to take care of Israel as a nation. It's spoken of there in the book of Revelation. God it said that Israel is going to be saved in a day. Israel will be saved in a day. He's talking about the nation now. He's not talking about individuals. Because individually, the church started with Israel. Individually, it all began at Jerusalem, among the children of Israel. Amen. And so it's, it, it's going to end up that way as well. Israel will be saved in a day. Amen. And when, but when we all get to heaven, whether you're Israel, whether you're a Jew or whatever you are, if you fulfill that which God is calling upon you to do, and that you will believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you'll be saved. Amen. If you follow God's follow God's instruction. Well, we're we're running out of time here, so let us drop down to. 
verse 20, we're talking about surrounding the, the walls of Jericho. In verse 20, it picks up and says, So the people shouted when the tr- priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass that when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. All under the instruction of God. It sounds pretty simple, and actually it was. Because we know it wasn't the vibration of noise. And there had to have been some vibration, you think? And all these trumpets sounded at their high pitch. And I don't know how many people were there representing Israel. I don't, you know... Uh, probably at least a million people or more. Uh, amen. And you, you take, and they would have shout at the top of their lungs. They got some vibration, no doubt. But I know this, it wasn't the vibration that shut knocked down the walls. It was God. Amen. They just obeyed. Thank you, Jesus. They just obeyed. And God backed up his word. And so the walls came down and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man, women, young, old, ox, sheep, ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto two men, the, to the two men that went and spied out the country, go into the harlot's house. He sent these two right back in there, no doubt, because she would be familiar with the with with these two because she had dealt with them previously. So it doesn't surprise me that he would send these same two men back in there uh, to deal with this harlot. Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as you swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all the kindred and all them that were out the camp of Israel. I can just say this. We're Gentiles. Amen. They were Gentiles. These people of Jericho. But God is willing to save whomsoever will. Amen. God is able to will save whomsoever will. Whomsoever will come unto me, Jesus says. And Rahab, the harlot, and all that she had, all of her people, amen. They they had to believe. They had to, they had to be, well, they were obedient. They fell upon the mercy of the Lord. They fell upon the mercy of God, and they were spared. They were saved. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold, the vessels of brass, of uh, iron, and they put it in the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father, household, household, and all that she had dwelt with Israel and the city unto this day because she had the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. I looked that up somewhat. And the old original Jericho, as we just read here, was utterly destroyed. Now, I don't know just when, but many, many years later, they would build a new, build up Jericho again, but not on that exact spot. And so they still have a Jericho, although I think it's called something else, but they still have a Jericho over there to this day. Uh, Amen. It's not the one that was destroyed, of course, but it was it's, it, it was rebuilt. Which Joshua was sent to spy out Jericho, and Joshua adjured them at the, at that time, saying, "Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest shall son shall he set up the gates of it." So the Lord was with Joshua, 
and his fame was noised throughout all of the country. And certainly this became a great testimony to this day. When you talk about biblical stories, biblical accounts, certainly this is one of those that are frequently referred to. And uh, it all brings glory to God. Glory to God. It, it, you might wonder sometimes why God chooses to do things in the way that he does and, and gives instruction to do things in the way that he does. The bottom line comes back so that when it is done and it is carried out, man can't say, I did it. Man can't say, I did it. And we've all perhaps had some experiences I'm sure you have. We all have some testimony that when we speak, when we witness, when we talk about it, it's done. God does things in our lives in such a manner and fashion that when we testify of that, we have to say, we have to acknowledge, man didn't do it. Man didn't do it. God did this, such and such and such, and, and we got a such and such and such res, uh, result. And you know what? It was a miracle. <laughs> it was a, it was a, mira, a, a miraculous event. Amen. So, and it's done in such a fashion so that God would give us something to testify and to witness about that would bring glory to him. And in a sense, give hope. God's not just simply a glory seeker. You know what I mean? Although he, he deserves and needs all the glory we can give. But God is not just a glory seeker. But he does these things so that we will have hope in him. Because he is the only source that can do these things. And so this... This builds hope in faith in the hearts of men, particularly sinners, Amen. that Jesus can save you. Jesus can deliver you. Jesus can heal you. Amen. Jesus can provide your every need. Thank you, Jesus. If we just follow and believe. His instruction. Amen. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. We can preach that and we can teach that because God has given us his word. And we're able that through his word, we're able to testify what God can do and what God will do. Amen.